fourth Sunday in Advent is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 7. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a palace of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. That night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go, and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now, I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you, the house, your house, and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. child and give birth to a son 
and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. But the Lord have mercy upon us. Tomorrow's present day, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. And what do we got over here? An angel. An angel, right? Yeah. So the fourth candle is called an angel candle. And uh, it reminds us, you know who gave the first messages about who Jesus was and he was born? Angels! Imagine that. Huh? Yeah. Angels did that. So angels. You have purple, yeah. Well, that's good too. Proving once again, you take your life into your own hands. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> that's pretty. Purple's pretty. Nice. So, so, angel, right? You know the word angel literally means messenger? That's what it means, messenger. Angels are messengers. And so they're always telling people about God and God's wishes. You heard that in the gospel lesson today, right? The angel Gabriel went to Mary and told her about she was going to give birth to, to Jesus. Yeah. So messengers. And the, the angels kind of reminds us, though, too, that we're messengers also. God wants to use us to tell people about Jesus. And this is a great time to do it, right? Are you been wishing people Merry Christmas or Blessed Christmas? That's good, yeah. We want to share Jesus with them. So when you have friends and family members, you can talk about Jesus with them. And you can serve as God's messenger. He wants all of us who know him, who know who Jesus is, know what he's done for us, to spread the word about Jesus. And it's a good word, isn't it? It's a word about, that he paid for all of our sins. He came in the world to, to be our Savior. So, very good. All right, thank you. You may go back to your seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. And the angel Gabriel from heaven came, with wings as drifted snow, with eyes as flame. All hail to the old land, lowly maiden Mary. Most highly favored lady, Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this morning comes from a variety of different places. The Old Testament text is David's desire to build a temple for God's holy ark in the presence of the Lord. And he is there told and reminded that the Lord himself is going to create a temple, a house, he plays on this term house, uh, and that his throne would endure forever. And in our gospel lesson, with the angel's message to Mary, we see, of course, uh, the fulfillment of this. She is told you will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And so the promised fulfillment that is given to David is, of course, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Gospels and Paul's letters and all the letters of the epistles of the New Testament point to this fact. John's Gospel say that the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us, using the imagery of the tabernacle. Uh, the Lord Jesus is the temple. He is the house. He is what this was all pointing forward to. And so, the fulfillment. Mary's role in the whole thing is simply to be on the receiving end of the Lord, as is it is all of our uh, case, that we are to receive from the Lord the gifts he brings to us. Um, and her re receptivity is, of course, uh, a type for the church. This is how Mary becomes called a type for the church. She is the most highly favored lady, and in a sense, that means the whole church is highly favored by the Lord. Indeed, her response to these things is exactly the response of faith. May it be to me as you have said. And her, also her comment that nothing, that she, or rather her reception of the comment from the angel, nothing is impossible with God. Mary is best honored when we remember her as that type of the church and we emulate her faith, her childlike faith, in the promises of God that he has given in Christ Jesus. We receive that even though these things can be above and beyond our comprehension. The fact, though, that these things are true, as marvelous as they are, as much as they make us scratch our head, are true for us. This evening we will celebrate his birth and tomorrow with full gusto, the infant in the manger, the little baby, is the ruler of the whole world. Everything continues to exist because he wills it. And yet, he needs to be fed by his mother. And yet, he needs to be taken care of by Joseph and Mary. And yet, all this for our sake. He comes into the world to be our Savior. Even his approach to us, how he comes, speaks of the sort of rain that he brings with him. Not something that we should fear and tremble before because of our sins, but in a humble and very meek manner. And it reminds us that we should be willing to look for his gifts in the most unlikely places, where he promises to be. We don't look for those gifts necessarily inside ourselves, but where he has said he will be. And we need to remember on the account of Christmas that they can be very, very humble, very unassuming. How many people passed by the inn or were in the inn, partying and having a good time, while well, the Lord of heaven and earth was in a manger next door, giving no thought to any of this and to whom they were passing by, humbled, hidden, sometimes beyond our comprehension. And yet this is how God works, how he desires to work. He comes in these forms that we would be able to receive. He places himself in the Old Testament in a temple so that they would know where to go to find God. Even though he cannot be confined to a temple, he locates himself for us that we might have the certainty of our salvation and know how he feels about us and what he's done for us. And he incarnates himself in his son. He tabernacles. He becomes one of us that we might have the certainty of our salvation. He who had no sin becomes sin on the cross for us and he places us. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, fulfilling all the types and all the promises of the Old Testament for you. And he comes in these ways through simple things like water and holy baptism. Placed sometimes on infants who can't even say daddy or mommy yet. And yet the name of God is placed upon them. He comes to you in the mouth of the preacher. He puts here to speak to you. 
He comes and he proclaims his word. He who hears you hears me, he says. Not because we're so wonderful, but because the message we have is his. It has his authority. It has his certainty. And of course, he comes to us in the simple forms of bread and wine. Again, hidden. And yet here he says, you have salvation. This do in remembrance of me for the forgiveness of your sins. As we approach Christmas, we give thanks to God for the way he comes to us in these humble ways to show his great love for you and for me. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.